My name is Emma Knott. I am a representative on the EPAG for EpiCare. That's to say I'm a patient advocate uh, working to help those with uh, rare and complex epilepsies. I've been a member of the EPAG, the Patient Advocacy Group, since I think around 2017. And my involvement came through my involvement with uh, an international charity that I helped set up in 2009 called Hope for Hypothalamic Hamatomas, which is, uh, as it sounds, uh, a charity that is dedicated to uh, research, uh, to funding uh, uh, funding research initiatives and to finding a cure for hypothalamic hematoma, which is a rare and complex epileptic syndrome. Although that organisation is based in America, I'm also a trustee of a UK organisation, sister organisation called Hope for Hypothalamic UK, uh, Hope for, for Hypothalamic Hematoma UK, and it's through that organisation uh, that I became a member of the uh, EPAG. Uh, because uh, despite Brexit, UK uh, expert centres and UK patient organisations are still included in the Epicare uh, network and Hope for Hypothalamic Hematomas UK is a member association. And there's a link because we have a medical advisory board as to many uh, charities and on our medical advisory board at Hope, we have Alexis Arzimaniglu and Helen Cross, who of course were uh, the two founding uh, coordinators of uh, Epicare. And it was really through my association with them that I then discovered Epicare and was really happy to come uh, and take on a patient advocacy role. The golden thread running through Epicare, as indeed all of the European reference networks, I would say, is the importance of the patient voice. Uh, it's the job of uh, any patient advocate uh, and certainly any member of the EPAC to ensure that the patient is prioritised at all levels and at every stage. Uh, and while each of us is a representative from an individual patient organisation, uh, and we support both paediatric and adult rare and complex epilepsy uh, communities. Uh, although we have our individual charities uh, and our individual epilepsies with which we're concerned at a ground level, within the EPAG we work collectively to help inform the medical and scientific community about the patient journey. So some of the Epicare initiatives that are informed and facilitated by our individual contributions will relate specifically to our individual epilepsies. So for example, uh, one of our projects was to create a patient journey, uh, an infographic uh, for clinician use and for patient use to see at a glance uh, what it is the patient goes through from uh, birth in some cases, but certainly the birth of the diagnosis through treatment, uh, through adulthood uh, and for the rest of their lives, a true patient journey. It is almost impossible to create a single patient journey for uh, the rare and complex epilepsies. And so each of us having uh, had a workshop together uh, created a patient journey for our specific uh, epilepsy. Uh, and in the result, we now have a good number of those available through the Epicare website. It's uh, quite extraordinary doing that exercise because one of the things that came out of it is how similar in many ways some of our uh, journeys are, not necessarily medically, but in terms of our access to medical care and in terms of our experiences of medical care. And it was through doing the patient journeys that we realized that there was a commonality of unmet needs. Uh, and so from that project where we individually described our patients' journeys, we were able then to discover those common unmet needs. And that then informed our contribution over the next two or three years to the Epicare meetings. Uh, we created a poster, 
uh, on the common unmet needs of patients who suffer rare and complex epilepsies. We presented that poster at uh, two congresses. Uh, unfortunately, it was at the time that the pandemic hit, so we had to do those online initially. Uh, but then at the next, uh, I think in Lyon, we were able to uh, give a presentation uh, about that. Uh, and of course, it, it, it's, it's based on the patient experience, uh, not simply anecdotal. Uh, but um, from surveys, uh, part of it, of course, is anecdotal, but we, we run our own uh, individual uh, surveys of our patients uh, and we are able, we think, to bring evidence based uh, information about the patient experience to the doctors at, at the table. Uh, other initiatives that we have um, started, uh, not completed, but got a long way along the line in, are leaflets, uh, one for the clinician, one for the patient, uh, describing uh, how, uh, uh, is, how it is best practice to diagnose, treat and manage uh, the individual epilepsy, in my case, HH, and its comorbidities. Uh, we've also created e-learning modules, uh, which are on the website, uh, and a series of webinars. Each webinar will focus on either uh, a rare and complex epilepsy or an aspect of rare and complex epilepsy. Each webinar will have input from the patient, uh, which is critical, absolutely critical. We most recently uh, as patient advocates, uh, on, at, at the invitation of uh, one of the doctors on the steering committee of Epicare, uh, collaborated uh, to co-author a research paper for the European Journal on Medical Genetics. So uh, we took five uh, genetic epilepsies uh, and discussed those, and that was published uh, this year uh, in that journal. Uh, and uh, so that, again, is another example of how we try to contribute uh, at a um, macro level uh, as well as at a um, patient level. I would say that although the first five years of EpiCare, we had to spend a lot of time finding our feet. Uh, it was complicated, of course, by Brexit and a switch um, of the Coordination Centre from London to Lyon uh, and all the bureaucracy that that entails. Uh, an extraordinary amount, I would say, has been achieved in those years. The network, first and foremost, uh, has been created, uh, and that in and of itself is a huge thing. Not only has it been created, but it expanded from, I think, 28 uh, expert centres to begin with to 50 now, including the uh, affiliates. Uh, friendships have been made uh, and strengthened. Complex epilepsy cases have been reviewed by the doctors uh, and given the benefit of considered expert advice that simply isn't available uh, in the typical primary care hospital uh, and often not in the patient's home country. And so, although we are still a nascent organisation, I would say there's every reason to hope and believe that the continued productivity and generosity in the pooling of ideas and resources will lead to significant and, and tangible improvements over the next five years for those of us who live with rare and complex epilepsies. Thank you.